So we are testing today, all of us, we are the families who are suffering uh, from the situation. Current scenario is so bad that uh, the interest rates have been hiked to higher proportions. We cannot get mortgages. And the worst part is that our partner in the contract, factory builders, they have undercut their prices. They have undercut their prices by several hundred thousand. This is Ajit Saroha. Him and other buyers staged a protest outside of a Madame Homes office who they bought pre-construction homes from and they believe they are getting ripped off by the company. In this protest, they blame Madame, they blame the Federal Reserve and they blame the Bank of Canada. But let's back up. Do you know what happens when you speculate on an investment that doesn't work out? You lose money. It's a very simple concept that many of us small cap investors understand. But many real estate investors believe that when their speculative investments don't work out, us Canadians or the parties that they entered into the contract with should help cover the tab for their losses. This story has a couple angles to it. One, we have home buyers trying to own shelter they plan to live in, in one of the most expensive real estate markets in the world. And then secondly, there's a story about people speculating on an asset class they believe that can only go up. The reason for this protest is simple. Home buyers, including Agit, purchased their pre-construction houses back in February 2022 and are now angry that similar houses are being sold at a lower price. In Agit's case, he agreed to purchase two luxury homes for $2.46 million each by putting down $800,000 in total deposits for the two houses. Now those houses can be bought for much less in 2023. Ajit is thinking about walking away from that money, but like other buyers, he fears that the company will sue him if he doesn't live up to the purchase agreement. He should know very well the ramifications of not owning up to a legal contract, since of course, he is a real estate lawyer himself. If you go under Ajit's website, you can see a section that says, real estate, we do clean and thorough job throughout the real estate transaction, whether it is commonplace residential or a more complicated commercial transaction. I don't know why he needs quotes on the word residential or commercial, but he then goes on to start the next sentence without a capital on the word take. Take up all kinds of civil and business litigation and see that they re reach their desired goal. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if you are looking to hire a lawyer, perhaps this guy who has a website that looks like it was built on GeoCities in 1997, who can't use proper grammar and spelling, might be the lawyer you are looking for. So what does Madame think of this fiasco? Well, they actually sent an email to the Toronto Star where Vice President of Communications for Madame Brent Carey says that updated prices are well within the reductions of the broader housing market and that just like the buyers, they also participate in a dynamic real estate market that is currently suffering a slowdown in both the new construction and resale sectors due to rising interest rates. Carey also states that sales occur the moment the agreement is signed, but home values routinely adjust over time as the market shifts. Prices may rise or fall between signing and closing, but all parties are obligated to abide by the firm contract they entered into and the risks of market fluctuations they assumed. Let's put ourselves in Agit's shoes for a second and try to understand his line of thinking. Since Madame hasn't finished construction on the house, they should be able to sell it for the same price they are marketing them for now. Okay, but what if it was the reverse and Agit had locked in the price below market? Would Madame expect the home buyers to fork over more money? Probably not. In the stock market sense, we would say that Madame was short housing in this particular case because they sold a house that they didn't have ready for delivery. Now, who knows what types of instruments Madame uses, if any, to hedge the market should it work against their portfolio. I doubt that they use many because they are net long the housing market. But that being said, a contract was entered into, Agit was expecting to make money by buying these two luxury homes, and ultimately it worked against him. But the problem doesn't just stop there. Many of these pre-construction home buyers are facing another issue. They were planning to fund these new houses by selling their old ones. And of course, in a declining market, that poses a problem. These buyers are theoretically stuck in their old houses, watching them rapidly depreciate as they are stuck in a contract to buy a new shiny house near peak prices whenever that construction is finished. Now, from my view, Agit is different. Agit is everything that's wrong with both the Canadian housing market and the economy. 
young Canadians want to be just like Agit, who have really little options given how badly we screwed things up. Agit isn't afraid to put his face out there and demonstrate that he's got a bigger than life personality, trying to get stinking rich off of real estate and has no shame telling everyone they ought to pay for his failed risks. There's two central themes here that I'm constantly ranting about. The first is that Canadians think that housing prices are always going to go up. And who can blame them after nearly three decades of gains? And then secondly, Canadians think that the best way to get rich is by investing in real estate. Nobody wants to play on the part of the risk curve where productive technologies and ideas and innovation happen that create jobs and create a better economy for young people. Now, what happened to these pre-con buyers is that they happen to speculate going long housing at the beginning of what appears to be the most aggressive rate hiking cycle in Canadian history, at least on a relative basis from where they started. To put it in perspective, in February 2022, the benchmark rate was still 0.25%. And Tiff Macklem said that rates would stay long for a very, very long time. Our message to Canadians is that interest rates are very low and they're going to be there for a long time. By the end of 2022, interest rates ended at four and a quarter points after seven separate hikes during the year, six of which were 50 basis point hikes. This has caused housing to come to a major standstill and people are reluctant to list their houses after mentally valuing them at an arbitrarily high number. The number of transactions for January 2023 is down nearly 45%, while selling prices are down around 16% on average to just over a million dollars a home. Well, new house listings have stayed flat, but tend to stay on the market for longer before they get sold. In a Toronto Star article, Agit says he doesn't know who he blames more, the builder or the Bank of Canada. Maybe we could suggest that Agit should use the mirrors in any of his Teslas to find the real person to blame. Though it's very sad for the first time slash dream home buyer who is now seeing their money go up in smoke, Agit was not a first time home buyer and was a speculator directly affecting the affordability of houses for other Canadians. Agit was an investor in something he believed would never go down and now simply wants to be bailed out by someone rather than accepting the consequences of his failed risk. Get ready folks, as Canada's housing market continues to unwind, we are going to hear lots of crybabies kicking and screaming along the way. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. I love you all.